Hello and welcome to Only Connect, featuring teams so erudite they know the periodic table backwards. And that's why they all failed chemistry so badly. I'm joking, of course. No one on this show has ever failed chemistry. Tonight's geniuses are, on my right, Andy Platt, a fine dining aficionado who knows all the words to the Italian national anthem. Sam Prouse, a media student who can name all 270 London underground stations. And their captain, Stephen Reed, a maths tutor who has taught himself how to beatbox. United by a weakness for words, they are the Lexplorers. Stephen, you came straight to the quarterfinals by winning two games outright. What do you think is your team's strongest round? Well, given our performance in the last game, where we scored five points going into the missing vowels round and ended up winning that round 8-0, I think the clue's in the name. I'm glad you're keeping track of it as you go along. I'm glad someone is. Well, good luck tonight. You are playing on my left. Kyle Lamb, a junior doctor who has recently taken up the cello. Izzy Bogod, a classics graduate who considers herself a bridge wag. <laughs> and their captain, Toby Nolanmacher, a natural sciences graduate who was once given a bell to scare off bears. All keen bridge players, they are the suits. Now, you took a slightly more roundabout route to these quarterfinals because you lost a match to the Lexplorers. And, in fact, that close game they're talking about was your last encounter. They just pipped you in the missing vowels round. Have you got a strategy for playing them again? Yes, they're clearly a very scary team. And they absolutely duffed us up in the missing vowels round, especially uh, Sam over there. Uh, so our aim this time is, by the time we get to the missing vowels round, we want to be 20 points ahead <laughs> or behind. Good luck with that. Well, your brinksmanship has begun early because you won the toss, but you're throwing them in first. So, Lexplorers, please choose a hieroglyph. Horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. What connects these apparently random clues? Your time starts now. Next. So are their names of pirates? Oh, no, Next. I, that's what I guess. Three seconds. Uh, names of pirates. They would really be excellent names for pirates. And for all I know, there may be pirates who go by those nicknames, but that is not the gist of this question. Suits, do you know? These are code names for military operations. They are code names for military operations. Do you know which military operations? Uh, Barbarossa oh, yeah. is Red Beard. Mm -hmm. uh, sea Lion, is that, was that just called Sea Lion? Yeah. No, you have to translate them translate into German into to get their oh, perfect German. origin. Okay. So, Unternehmen Seelöwe. I apologise, that's still <laughs> terrible German. So uh, Tannenbaum. Tannenbaum. Tree, and Mercury is, um, is it like Quicksilver? Silver. It was just Mercur, Mercur because okay. they're World War II invasions and they are German invasions, although that third one uh, is uh, not in German. That was the invasion of the USSR, codenamed Barbarossa. So you get the bonus point, and which question would you like? Uh, the Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Yeah, yeah. Fine. <laughs> Next, please. Yeah. They have laws named after them. Can you be more specific? They have three laws named They after have them. three laws in a particular field of knowledge. Tell me about these laws. Uh, Asimov is robotics, Newton is motion, Kepler is planetary motion, and Aristotle? Mm, something natural. I'll give you a clue. They're the laws of contradiction, excluded middle, and the principle of identity. These are, of course, logic, logic laws yeah. of logic. Do you know uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, robotic laws? Um, don't kill people, that's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. I've been phrased as a robot may not injure a human being or allow a human being to come to harm. A robot may not harm itself? It must protect its own existence, that's right. And I don't know the third. Mm -hmm. It must obey orders given to it by a human. Very well done, well spotted. Which question would you like, Lexplorers? Uh, lion, please. Lion. OK, what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Oh, 
Is it something I hate? A scream. Creep. 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 So we can get it next. Stamps. Good guess, but not the answer, I'm afraid. Soup's another bonus chance for you. We think maybe there are desserts named after them in these languages? There are not desserts oh. named after them in these languages. If I were to say murky waters in the language Cree, the word I would use, according to our question editor, Mr McGacky, is Winnebeeg. Of course, he has a strong Texan accent. He told me that, left the room. Mr. Whaley Cohen ran in out of breath and said he pronounced it wrong, but you know, close enough. Trade in Algonquin, Adewa. Yeah, yeah it's just Canadian cities. They are Canadian cities. It is the Cree word, and that gives us the name Winnipeg, the Algonquin word for trade, Ottawa, Victoria, of course, in English, and Morawayal becomes Montreal. Montreal, the, the origins of Canadian city names in different languages. So no points there, but Suits, what would you like? We would love the Twisted Flax, please. The Twisted Flax. These are going to be picture clues. What do they have in common? Here's the first. <laughs> uh, next one, please. And the next one, please. Next one, please. Two seconds. Yes. We think these might be okay. slang for policemen. They are slang terms for police. Yeah, well done. Thank you. What are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at a copper or copper. Mm -hmm. We're looking at a PC. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at a carrot peeler. Well, just peel yeah. peeler. Peeler. Why? Yeah. <laughs> right. okay. Fair enough. Why are the police called peelers? Because their eyes are peeled. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, one hopes their eyes are peeled, but no, it's after Robert Peel. Oh, of course. Uh, sure. <laughs> exactly. So PC and the first one. And uh, we're not sure who that gent is. You don't know that gent. Sorry. Who is, is that? Bobby Siegel. It's Bobby Siegel, oh, exactly, oh, out oh, of Monkman yeah. and Siegel. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly right. Bobby, PC, Peeler, Copper, all slang terms for the police. Explorers, what would you like? Uh, two reads, please. Two reads. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, it is the music question. I've had it every time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a really nice one. Your first clue is coming in now. How often at night when the heavens are bright no, with the light from the glow. It's um, I know what it is. Um, it's um, next. He called the greatest archers to a tavern on the green. They vowed to help the people of the king. It's Beauty and the Beast, as opposed to the the Bowie one. Two seconds. Uh, do they have something to do with Disney films? We heard Beauty and the Beast from David Bo by David Bowie. Yeah. They share their titles with Disney films, absolutely right. You only recognise Beauty and the Beast? Yeah, that was, it's the first track on Heroes. Uh, that's more David Bowie yeah. knowledge than I even yeah. needed. Uh, the first one, Home on the Range. And third one, Dick James singing the theme tune to... Um... Who that features in a Disney film might have called people to a tavern on the green? Robin Hood. Robin Hood, ah, very good. Okay. And the last one, Madonna... Uh, Most successful animated film of all time, Frozen. Oh, what was it? OK. They are all songs that share their titles with the title of Disney films. Well done. Last question of the round for you, Suits, the water question. What do these clues have in common? Here's the first. Uh, hello. Excellent. Next, please. Yeah. Next, please. Two seconds. 
seconds. Uh, we're going to say red and gold. Not the answer, I'm afraid. Leg explorers, do you know? Ed Sheeran. He's got red hair and gold discs, but I can't give it to you. I need to hear the name Ed Sheeran. Yeah. He played cameos in those things. He played Sir Cormac in The Bastard Executioner, a TV drama. He played Teddy in Home and Away in 2015. He guessed it in Game of Thrones and he played himself in Bridget Jones's Baby. Well done. You get the bonus point, and that means at the end of round one, the Explorers have two points, the Suits have five. <laughs> On to the sequences round, and Explorers, you'll be going first again. So, which question would you like? Uh, twisted flax, please. Twisted flax. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Jane, I it's half of you. It's half of you. Should we get one more? Just make sure. Next. Half of you. It's half of you. It's half of you. So it's like. Uh, oh, sorry, it's a really. It looks, like looks like a less than. Yeah. Right. Looks like a less than. Half an eight. Uh, the right half of a capital letter X. It is the right half of a capital letter X. Does look like a less than sign. You spotted it immediately. Let's have a look at all the clues. What's happening here? Uh, you've taken U, V, W and X capital letters, chopped them in half. Simple as that. It's half of the letters U, V, W and X. Well spotted. Suits, what would you like? Uh, we'd like the Horned Viper, please. OK. What is the fourth in this sequence? Here's the first. Yes. Two equals one over thirty-six. Five points to you. <laughs> I'm tempted to applaud myself. <laughs> that is brilliant quizzing. Let's have a look at all the clues. What's happening? These are probabilities of rolling the number on the left with two die. I mean, that's absolutely brilliant. If you roll two dice, you get 36 possible variants. If you want a five, you've got four goes at it, or one out of nine. To roll a four, one in 12. To roll a three, one in 18. And you can only roll the two one way, snake eyes. So that is one out of 36. Very, very impressive. Next explorers, what would you like? Uh, Eye of Horus, please. Eye of Horus. Oh, come on. <laughs> it, is, it is a music sequence here. I'm, I'm sorry to hand this to you. It doesn't mean I don't love you. You'll be hearing your clues. I want to know what kind of thing you'd expect to hear in fourth place. The first one is coming in now. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve speaking. itself into a dew. Oh, I don't know who's speaking, but yeah. Or that the ever love. Are the draft beer preservation V in excess. Or, or a band beginning The Iguanas. With there are a band. I'm pretty sure there's a band called the Iguanas. And why would that be? Because it's, um, it's letters going back because it's the K, the Kinks, the J, the Jam, the I. Ah, uh, unfortunately, that does not work for the first clue, though it's an ingenious guess. Suits, would you like to have to go for a bonus point? We're going to go with um, Franz Ferdinand. Not it. It is not about the performers. It is about the pieces of music. That first clue, you heard speech, but the piece of music is William Walton's musical setting of Hamlet. For an extra clue, the voice you heard over the top was John Gilgood, oh, that this tutu solid flesh would melt, that is, quoting from Hamlet. So, Hamlet. Oh. Second one was really? the Village Green Preservation Hamlet. Society. Oh. The kinks, then Hamlet. a town nice. called Malice. We've just got residential areas getting bigger. We want something with city. So, we built this city. We built this city. We built this city, for example. I'm glad you reminded me of that song. But how precisely does it go? I wonder what the chorus sounds like. Maybe you can remind me. One, two, three, four. We built this city. We built, we built this, this city on rock and roll. <laughs> and my second round of applause this evening. You're all brilliant. <laughs> uh, although you don't get any points. <laughs> Unlucky. Back to you, Suits. What would you like? Oh, we'd love the lion, please. The lion. What would come forth in this? Picture sequence. Here's the first. Uh, next, please. <laughs> uh, 
next, please? going to go for William Shakespeare. And why would that be? Unclear. We think it's connected to the last picture, but not really the others. <laughs> <laughs> not a sequence, I'm afraid. Lex Flores, do you know? George Clooney. Uh, George Clooney. It would be so nice to see a picture of George Clooney, wouldn't it? But what sequence would he make? Um, it's the Secret Seven, isn't it? The human... Or the Famous Five. Oh, famous you're five. unlucky. It's a Famous Five. But we can already see George. There's George Eliot. Oh, We've got yeah. oh. Julian Clary, because Julian in the Famous Five is 12. George and Dick are both Timmy. 11. It's age order. So it's Anne Timmy. is next. And the youngest is Timmy. I, I think the... Although I never really understand about dogs. Are they sort of two or a hundred? Aren't they sometimes very old? But uh, <laughs> if, if you do it in human years, Timmy would be the youngest. Yeah. And we've got a lovely picture of Timmy Mallet there. So unlucky. You knew the general area, but not the next clue. Nevertheless, you may have your own question. Which would you like? Water, please. Water. That would come forth in this sequence. Here's the first. Next. Not a sequence, I'm afraid. Suits, do you know? We're going to go for, uh, for Morrison. Is the right answer. And why is that? Uh, we think they're Australian Prime, Prime Ministers Jesus, yeah. who are men. We've skipped Gillard? Julia Gillard, no. Yeah. No, no, no. She's earlier in the right. sequence. Right. We're, we're starting with Kevin Rudd, the 2013 <laughs> yeah. Prime Minister. You fell into yeah. our little trap. Of course, there are British women politicians that go by the name of Rudd and Abbott, but there is no Turnbull. These are Australian politicians, indeed Prime Ministers, going forwards towards Scott Morrison. Well done. And you may have the last question of the round. The two reads what would come forth in this sequence. Here's the first. Uh, next, please. Uh, we'll take the next, please. We're going to say equality, fight for equality, or equality in the workplace. And why? Uh, we think these might be relating to different waves of feminism. And which wave of feminism are you giving me? The uh, fourth oh, wave. Fourth. All right, I'll take it. I would say <laughs> that fighting for equality in the workplace might characterise all waves of feminism that yeah. have ever been. But uh, you know that it's waves of feminism going forwards, and uh, the example we gave was hashtag me too. Right. But really, yeah. any example of modern feminist fighting, <laughs> and uh, I I I'm sorry to say that women are still fighting for equality in the workplace, so I'm going to take that answer. And that means at the end of round two, the Lexplorers have five points, the suits have 13. <laughs> Connecting wall time now, and it will be the suits to go first. So would you like lion or water? The lion, please. The lion wall. You have two and a half minutes to solve it. Starting now. That's a grain. OK, so I'll do these while you guys look. Morris is not. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sugarcane's not a grain. Basil brush, boot brush, um, drop shot, peacock, is um, alpha miller. Yeah. Um, that's a tree bark. 
What, Peacock? Mrs. Peacock. I don't know. Should we call it Johnny Peacock? He's a oh, no. Paralympian. Boot. Maybe don't panic. Um, Tim boot. Rice. Tim Rice. Tim Morrison. Argo's the best picture. Um, Drop out. Yes. No. no. Argo. Argonaut. It's a ship. Any of the ships? Uh, no. Right, I'll keep clicking things. And just try it with yeah, everything. Um, um, Clark okay. Maxwell. Clark. Clark Kent. Mm, is this one or not? Yes. Okay. Morrison's is a Clark's. Yes. Um, boots. Boots. Morrison's, yes. Yeah. Morrison's yeah. Clark's. Boots. Bad Peacocks. Uh, and Mines, Mazes, Trees. Millet. Millet. Yeah. Okay, and what's We're the Peacocks. one? Peacocks. Peacocks. Yeah. Um, Arthur is a king. Yes. Millet. Mm. Okay, I'll do them again. Drops. Bamboo's yeah. king. Well, are, they, are they all like kind of children's Lazarus. shows? Or? No. Um, no. Argos. Argos. Okay, Argos. Um, no, Clark's is no, Miss, Miss Millet. Uh, Keep thinking. No. The brains. The brains. Oh, that's tree house. Okay, fine. Um, what next? Okay. Three lines. Try that, try that, try that. Woohoo! Three lines. Three lines. Oh. Right. Maze. 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 You solved the wall. I mean, I thought you were going to get nothing, yes, and you solved the wall. Lie. That's Bit of witchcraft. incredibly <laughs> exciting. Um, what about the connections? Millet, Clark, Peacock, Argo. Uh, if you add an S, these are high street shops. You add an S to get a shop. And the next group, drop, tree, line, boot. And we think these can come before shot? Drop, drop shot, shot, tree, tree shot, shot, line, line shot. shot. No, they can't. Right. They come after gum. Gumdrop, oh, gum tree, yeah, gum line, yeah, yeah. gum boot. And the next group, maize, sugarcane, rice, bamboo. So these are crops. Crops or grasses, absolutely right. And the next group, Braxton, Morrison, Arthur, Sports. Basil. Or people in um, Faulty Towers. Oh, yeah, I'll go for that one. Yeah. Characters in Faulty no, no. Towers? Nope. No. They are just women called Tony. Oh, the singer oh, Tony oh, Braxton, the writer that. Tony Morrison, oh. Tony Sorry. Arthur, Tony I, I, Basil. I only know Tony Morrison. Uh, 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 but in an amazing twist, you did get <laughs> yeah. all four groups yeah. and you've given me two connections. That is a total of six. Let's bring in their opponents now, give them the other wall, see how they get on. You have two and a half minutes to solve the water wall starting now. Bosney Bay. Bosney Bay. Bay. Tampa Bay. Um, Montego. Montego Bay. Montego Bay. Hudson Bay. Is that a yeah. thing? Okay. I've got Kate Moss, Kate Bush, uh, okay. Kate Bosworth, Kate Hudson. Right, are there Did any other bays? Is Galveston a bay? It's a Moss Bay. Probably some should, at some point. I think we should just. Um, okay. Let's put, put the Kates. And this, are there five ca ca bays then? I don't, I don't know if Galveston is a bay. Should we put the. So it's Kate Moss. Kate Bush, Kate Hudson, Kate, Hudson, Kate Bosworth. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So Botany, Montego, Galway Bay, Tampa Bay. Uh, I think uh, Seine, Lyre, uh, Lyre. Well, was that of law? I know, but bone law is not spelled out. Um, okay. There, are, there are bays. Um, the Galveston a bay. That's the only one. Right. Should we just cycle through everything? Okay. okay. okay oh, okay. Okay. Three lives now. Okay. Uh, Tampa. Tampa is in Florida. A little bit loads of time, just. Uh, okay. Horseshoe. Horseshoe, horse radish, horse play, sword play. Sword play, horse play. Role play. Role play. Air play. Air play. Screen play and air play. So, Pia, Sane, Tampa. Okay, we'll do Pia, Sane, Tampa. Now, it's. Mmm. Think more. Um, screen time. Should we just have three goes at this group? Okay. We haven't got um, much time. Yeah, just I think we should just try and work out what the other connection is. 30 Pine seconds. Uh, uh, I'll try screen and air with those. Okay. Screen, okay, it's not air. It's not air. Okay, okay. Screen, and air. Tampa. screen and air must both be in the same group. So sort of horse or roll. Uh, sword play, horse play, role play. I don't know. I think roll has got more things that will go with okay. it. So I'm more likely to be on the okay. You saw the wall. Very well done. But do you know why? Let's look at the first group Moss, Bush, Hudson, Bosworth. Uh, these are all people named Kate. 
famous women called Kate. Next group, Galveston, Botany and so on. We think these are all bays. They are bays. And the next group, Pyre, Roll, Seine and so on. Uh, are they uh, homophones or things? Tampa can be spotted. They a are not. Are. You're not spotting it. If you put an X on the end, you get a brand name. Oh, okay. Pyrex, Rolex, Sanex, Tampax to right. get a brand name. And the last group, Sword, Horse, Screen, Air. They can all be followed by Play. You can put Play on the end of all of them. So that's four groups, three connections, a total of seven. Let's have a look at the overall scores. The Lexplorers have 12 points, the Suits have 19. But as you say, the last time you teams met, that kind of discrepancy was turned around in the Missing Vowels round. Will it happen again? Fingers on buzzers, teams. I can tell you that the first group of clues are all queens. Explorers. Mary, Queen of Scots. Correct. Explorers. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Yes, it is. Explorers. Aretha Franklin, Queen of Soul. Well done. Don't know this one. One for the Londoners. Ealing, Queen of the Suburbs. Next category, like rather than love songs. Suits. You don't have to say you like me. Correct. Explorers. I will always like you. You too. Suits. Uh, like talk, maybe. You no, know, that's not it, I'm afraid. Explorers, do you know? No, too long. It's like to like you, baby. Next clue. Suits. When a man likes a woman. Lovely. Next category, things with four-letter abbreviations. Suits. Thank, Thank God, God it's Friday. TGIF. Nobody risked trying to say National Aeronautics and Space Administration or <laughs> NASA. That is the end of the quiz. And looking at the final scores after winning points and losing points in the missing vowels round, the winners with 21 points are the suits. Very well done. Lexplorers, you finish with 16. Unlucky. You've quizzed so well during your time here, I'm afraid. That's the end of the road. Thank you for playing. Well done, suits. You're through to the semi finals. We'll see you there. And coming up next on BBC Two, it's a historical documentary in which Michael Portillo looks at the liberation of Saigon in 1975, tracing the incredible helicopter evacuation. That's Michael Portillo's Choppers Out, next on BBC Two. <laughs>